So welcome to the first lecture in Math 232, Real Analysis. So here we will discuss measure and integration and theory. So as an introduction, let us uh, discuss the Riemann uh, integral. So in calculus, we've used uh, Riemann integration in several occasions. So for instance, if you want to calculate the area under a curve, in this case defined by a function f, bounded by the vertical lines x equals a, x equals b, and the x-axis. If you want to calculate the area and uh, with respect to this uh, shaded region, then we just need to integrate the function f over the uh, closed interval a, b. Another example is calculating uh, the center of mass of a certain body. So in this figure, we have a tetrahedron having, let's say, a mass density rho. So to calculate uh, the center of mass, let's say, if I want to compute the i at a component, then I just need to integrate x sub i over the tetrahedron all over the total mass. So here, uh, one can calculate the total mass just by integrating the, ma uh, the mass density rho over the uh, tetrahedron T. And you do this for each component of the center of mass. Okay. We also use, uh, you can also use uh, the Riemann integral in uh, the following examples. For instance, one could calculate uh, the position of a moving uh, projectile just by integrating twice the acceleration. One could also, for example, in uh, population dynamics, one could uh, determine the population density by integrating uh, the population growth rate. And in economics, one could uh, compute uh, the uh, revenue or total cost knowing or just by integrating the so-called marginal cost or marginal revenue respectively. Although uh, the Riemann integral uh, is useful in certain situations, it has some uh, pitfalls. So let us discuss some limitations of uh, the Riemann integral. So the first one is uh, the following. There are simple functions that are not Riemann integrable. Uh, the word simple here is not defined precisely, uh, but let us agree with the usual meaning of the word uh, simple. So as an example, uh, let us consider the following uh, directly function on the closed interval uh, zero to one. So this function f has either a value of one or zero, depending on the nature of the input x. So if x is rational, then the value is one, otherwise it is zero. So this means that the value is zero. Uh, the value is zero if uh, x is an irrational number in the closed interval zero to one. Uh, therefore, the Dirichlet function is nothing but a the characteristic function of the rational numbers in the uh, on the closed interval zero to one. So, just to have an intuition, so here is a portion of the graph. Okay, a very very small portion of the graph of the Dirichlet function. So, if x is zero, x is one half, and x is one. Those are rational numbers, therefore the function values are all equal to one. On the other hand, uh, if you have e over 10 or a square root of two over two, the value is zero because they are uh, irrational. So this uh, simple function is not uh, Riemann uh, integrable. For now, uh, there is no proof but we will uh, look at 
this example uh, in the future. Another limitation of uh, the Riemann integration is uh, the following. So we may uh, want to pose uh, the following question. Is it possible to interchange the processes taking limits and integrals okay. in a mathematical precise way? Consider a sequence of functions f sub n on a closed interval a, b, okay? in such a way that the values of f sub n of x tends to sum function f at x for any point x in AB. So this is what we call pointwise convergence. So the functions, uh, the sequence of functions f sub n converges to this function f pointwise. Then, can we ask the following? If I take the limit of the integrals, is this the same as the integral of the limits? So here, uh, we just use this part here, which is precisely uh, this one, okay? So can we interchange limits and integrals knowing pointwise convergence? So the answer is already given here. In general, this is not true in the case of the human integral. Well, uh, one might ask, when is this possible? Uh, one can interchange lim uh, limits and integration provided that uh, the limit here is uh, uniform. So, well, uh, if you write the limit in terms of the epsilon delta uh, definition, this delta here does not depend on x. And in that case, you say that uh, the limit uh, is uniform. Okay. So therefore, the Riemann integral in general, uh, we are not allowed uh, to interchange uh, the limit and the integral. Well, to explain this roughly, recall that uh, the Riemann integral is basically uh, the limit of Riemann sums. So Riemann sums here geometrically, you can think of the sum of the areas of these, uh, let's say four uh, rectangles. Okay. So one could uh, uh, compute the Riemann integral uh, over this, let's say interval AB, if you take a smaller partition of uh, this subinterval, and then you construct uh, the corresponding uh, rectangles. Okay. So in short, the Riemann integral is also a limit. So if you go back to our previous uh, question, so if you view the Riemann integral as a limit as well, then the question. Uh, can be posed in the following way. Can we interchange limits? So as a simple illustration, uh, not in the case of Riemann sounds, but in case of uh, a purely uh, a, a sequence of uh, numbers, let us consider uh, the following uh, sequence m over n, okay? Now, uh, for a fixed m, if we let n tend to infinity, then the denominator here uh, increases without bound, therefore the fraction goes to zero. So the limit, the inner limit is zero, hence uh, the left-hand side has limit as zero. Now, on the other hand, if you look at the inner limit on the right-hand side, for a fixed n, as m goes to infinity, uh, the ratio m over n uh, is unbounded. 
particular, uh, the limit here is infinity. Hence, uh, the limit of the right-hand side is infinity. Therefore, if you interchange the limits, you will get a different uh, result. So therefore, uh, the order of limits in this example is very uh, important. And you cannot just interchange the order. Uh, somewhat uh, related to two uh, is, is the following. So we're asking whether we can interchange an infinite sum and the integral. Well, if you look at the left-hand side, and uh, knowing that uh, an infinite series is the limit of partial sums. So if you have an infinite series or an infinite sum, this is uh, basically the limit of the partial sums. So let me repeat it here. So the limit of the partial sums is the uh, infinite series, of course, provided that we have convergence. And here we interchange uh, the order of the uh, finite sum and the integral, which is possible due to the linearity of the Riemann integral. So is the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side? So here we've also written the infinite series or infinite sum in terms of the limit of the partial sums. And again, this is in the same spirit as item two. Can we interchange the limit and the integral? Well, uh, this uh, seemingly uh, simple question has been encountered by uh, the French mathematician Fourier when he is studying uh, uh, the propagation of uh, heat on a circular rod. Okay, and uh, more precisely, uh, these functions g sub n's are trigonometric, so meaning in terms of sines and cosines. And uh, the resulting series is uh, now the well known uh, Fourier series. So the question is is it uh, possible to interchange uh, an infinite series and the uh, integration? Well, this. Uh, Simple question uh, leads to several uh, improvements in uh, mathematics. For instance, uh, during that time of free aid, there's no rigorous definition of uh, continuous functions. And it was only uh, during the works of Weierstrass, Cauchy, and others where they have defined now the definition that we are using in calculus, and that is the epsilon and delta definition. This also leads to the generalization of length and area. Okay, So how can we define uh, the length of uh, general curves or the area of general uh, regions? And this is studied by uh, the mathematicians Fubini and Tonnelly, among others. Excuse me. So this uh, question of interchanging uh, limits and integrals also lead to the concept of infinite sets. It might, at first sight, it might uh, be weird, uh, but uh, the first answer to this uh, problem here is that assuming uh, that you have, let's say, uh, under nice conditions on the functions g sub n, this equation is valid except on a small set. Okay. And this small set can be infinite. And uh, Cantor uh, want 
uh, to quantify how large is this uh, infinite sets are, okay, where the equality fails to hold. Okay. So yeah, this a uh, simple uh, question of interchanging limits in integration leads to uh, the different uh, areas in uh, mathematics. Okay. So what would be the goal of uh, this course? So our goal is to develop a generalization of the Riemann integral in such a way that we are able to integrate a large class of functions. Okay. Uh, by large here we mean uh, functions that are integrable but not a Riemann integrable. And of course, it is possible to interchange the limits and integrals under non-restrictive uh, conditions. And uh, this generalization is what we call the Lebesgue uh, integral. And this will be discussed in the second part of the course. I would like uh, also to mention that this uh, what idea of interchanging uh, limits in integration arises uh, in uh, constructing or developing models in uh, continuum physics. Uh, for instance, starting from uh, physical laws, uh, for, uh, for example, uh, mass conservation, the balance of momentum or uh, thermodynamic laws, one would uh, derive uh, uh, integral equations, and based on these integral equations, one obtains uh, the differential equations. Okay. For instance, uh, in uh, fluid uh, dynamics, uh, this is the way uh, how the uh, Euler equations or the Navier-Stokes equation for uh, compressible or incompressible fluid flows has been uh, derived. So if you can see a line here, the passage from uh, int integral equations to differential equations requires the process of interchanging integrals and derivatives. Okay, and as you know, in calculus, derivatives are also limits. Okay. Particular uh, limits of difference quotients. So aside from the Euler and the Navier-Stokes equations, uh, uh, this process uh, was also used in deriving uh, the Poisson equation in, uh, let's say, electrostatics or uh, uh, stationary heat flow, and you also have the wave equations. So interchanging integrals and limits also appear in uh, the modeling process. Just to give you an idea, the, or a comparison between uh, the integrals of Riemann and Lebesgue. So the fundamental idea of uh, the Riemann integration is the following. First, you would like to partition the domain into subintervals. Second, uh, construct uh, this, uh, construct re uh, rectangles with uh, suitable heights, and then you make the subintervals small. Okay. To have a simple uh, illustration, let us consider the following step function y equals f of x, okay? And it has uh, two values, which is one and two, okay? So we want to determine the area uh, under this function from negative one to two. So the first step is to partition the domain into subintervals. So here, the partition is determined by the height. So we have uh, three subintervals, and then we construct 
these rectangles R1, R2, then R3. So the area, which is basically the integral from negative 1 to 2, is nothing but the sum of the areas of these uh, three rectangles. And this is the sum. OK. So taking the areas of uh, these rectangles, the first factors here corresponds to the base, or the length of the base. And the second factors corresponds to the heights. In this case, 1, 2, and 1. And if you take uh, the sum, you will get the area 4. Okay. So that's basically uh, the Riemann integral of this uh, simple step function uh, by uh, just by taking uh, a subdivision into three uh, intervals. Okay. So again, you partition the domain into subintervals and then construct uh, the suitable uh, rectangles. And uh, here, of course, in elementary geometry, you can calculate the area of the base, uh, the area of the rectangle by just by multiplying the uh, base and the height. How about uh, the case of Lebesgue? Okay. Notice here, we just interchange the order of uh, taking uh, the area of the rectangle, height uh, times base. Okay. To be more precise, we would like to partition the image. Well, you can think here as the heights. Okay. And then determine uh, the length of the inverse images. In other words, what are uh, the sets uh, that would correspond uh, to the image set. Going back to the graph, take note here that uh, the image of F consists of only two points. And those are one and two. Okay. So this would be those heights. OK. Now, so knowing the height here, we would like to consider the length of the inverse image of the height. And that would be the base. So when the height is 1, OK, if you take the inverse image, of the uh, set containing one, this would be this interval here. So that's the uh, half close, half open, negative one to zero, and then the inter close interval one and two. And similarly, similar, uh, similarly, if you want to uh, get the inverse image of the set containing two, so you just need to project this onto the x-axis and you will get uh, this interval and you have the half close half open uh, interval has zero to one okay and uh, we can now calculate the length okay so the length of this is two and the length of this is one so you will have the following areas and you end up with the same answer for okay so to summarize the difference between a Riemann integration is the following so in the case of Riemann we divide the domain in the case of Lebesgue we divide the codomain or the image set 
for this example, we get uh, the same uh, result. Well, there's uh, a good analogy or uh, a very nice analogy of comparing Riemann and Lebesgue integrals in terms of cutting a cake. Okay. So to simplify uh, the discussion, uh, suppose we want to cut the cake in, uh, the cake in uh, two uh, portions. So the left part would be the, Riem the Riemann way of cutting the cake and the right part would be the Lebesgue case. Why is that so? So in this case, we want to divide the domain, that's the base, okay, in two parts and then from this cut the cake going to the above. So you will have this trace a portion here, okay? On the other hand, in the case of Lebesgue, here you have two heights of the cake, one in the middle, and then one on the top. And then uh, you take the, uh, in this case, a cylindrical portion by dividing uh, the corresponding height. So for this height, you will get this portion. And on the middle part, you will have uh, some uh, donut uh, shape uh, portion. Okay. So that is the Lebesgue way of cutting a cake. So the question is, what way of cutting the cake uh, do you like most? Is it the Lebesgue way or the Riemann way? Well, uh, you can think of this portion here as the one in our last example. This part here. Okay. So if, for example, you look at, at the cake on one side, uh, you will get somehow uh, this uh, figure. Okay, there's a subtle way in the above discussions. So how about the Dirichlet function? What if I want to apply the process discussed uh, a while ago in the case of the Dirichlet function? So let us recall that the Dirichlet function is either one or zero, depending whether an x is rational or irrational. So here, uh, the range consists of only two values, zero or one. Now, if you want to take the inverse image of one or the set containing one, that would be precisely the rationals in the closed interval zero to one. On the other hand, if you want to take the inverse image of the set containing zero, that would be the complement of the rationals, meaning the irrationals on the closed interval zero to one. Now, the question is, how do I find, or how do I determine the length of these sets? You can pause this video and think about it So now that you recognize the difficulty in, determine, in determining the length of these sets, we want to somehow generalize the notion of length of intervals to these more, uh, gen uh, more general sets. So in the case of two dimensions, that would be the, uh, 
the areas, and in case of three dimensions, that would be uh, the case of the volume. And this is the concept of measures that we will discuss in the first part of the course. So before uh, discussing Riemann, or uh, no, the Lebesgue integration, we need to discuss the concept of measures. So that's it for the introduction. And for uh, the next lecture, we will talk about uh, measure spaces. So see you then.